So here with uh, Amber Benson and Adam Bush. Hey guys. Um, Amber and Adam were both on Buffy the Vampire Slayer and uh, have uh, worked on a number of things together and independently for quite a while uh, and have a great film out now called Drones. What's, what's an average day like for you guys nowadays? I think the most average thing about it is, is that there's nothing average happening. Good. Like every day it's completely different. Some days are completely filled with appointments and meetings and other days you're just sitting around waiting for the phone to ring. Chances are if you made plans of any kind from something like, I'm going away this week, or I'm going to get my car washed on Tuesday. That is when something will come up. So it's best not to plan anything and just spend your life being at the ready. <laughs> so that, that would be your advice for a young budding actress? Is just... Well, it's hard. You get a day job, and then you're busy all day. And the one audition a month that came in for you, if you're working and you don't go to it, then you won't work as an actor. So you kind of have to find day jobs or things, ways to make money that leave you available during the day to get appointments and that you can quit if you get a job. Well, as you can see, it's very hectic and uh, a little chaotic, um, a lot of pressure because there's a lot of, there's so much technical things to deal with when you're shooting film. Um, it's more about, is the lighting right? <laughs> perfect timing, um, is the sound right, is the camera right, and you have to do um, your performance again and again and again. There's, there's a lot of waiting between shots often. There is. You're always waiting for you know, the, the technical side of it to be put together. A lot of waiting. So you, uh, you're you on uh, the Sarah Silverman program, which is on Comedy Central, mm -hmm. and it's, it's there right now, um, And but you guys aren't shooting right now. So when you are shooting, what's your, what's what's an average day like? So. Um, well, being a, being a girl and being the only other girl, I'm usually the first one in because girls always have to come in earlier because they usually require more hair and makeup time and wardrobe time. And so, so you have I'm people there that work on your hair and makeup? And yeah. And, I mean, it sounds very glamorous, but it's the kind of job where, like, say, you know, you, um, I don't know, like, something came up and, and, you know, your dog needs to go to the vet at noon. You're like, you can't say, you know, I gotta, I gotta go, uh, take an, a an extra hour at lunch today. There's no such thing as that. There's actually someone whose job it is to make sure that you don't leave. But maybe you should explain, like, what a traditional day is, like, when you have an appointment or you have an audition that you're prepping for. Like, maybe, maybe that would be a good, sure. a good, um, go for it. So let's let's say you have an appointment for something that you're working on. Um, you basically will be emailed a set of sides, and sides are these pages of, of scenes that you have to memorize, or at least be able to be sort of familiar with, so that when you go in the room and you read them for for uh, casting directors, that you're not just like totally freaking out because you don't know what you're. You know, you have to kind of be really familiar with them. Uh, Adam's very good at memorization, so he memorizes them. I tend to memorize some of it and then try and wing the rest of it, which isn't the best approach, maybe. But, uh, so you spend your day working on them, then you'll go into an appointment, and you'll sit in a waiting room, you'll sign in, and put, you know, what time your appointment is, and then you go in and you read, and sometimes you read for casting director, sometimes you read for the producers and the director and the casting director. Once in a blue moon, you'll read with another actor, um, and then that's your day. You spend all day getting there, prepping for it, doing your makeup and your hair if you're a girl, just getting dressed if you're a boy. Maybe some boys wear makeup. Some. Some. Do you have an agent or a manager? How do you get the auditions and the parts that you usually get? Um, I get a lot myself through actors breakdown services that you can subscribe to. I pay sixty dollars a month, I mean a year, um, to subscribe to a breakdown service called Actors Access and so I get a lot of auditions through that. I've actually flown all over the world to the Philippines, to India, um, across the country, to Wisconsin, just from projects that I've actually got myself. Uh, but I do have a manager, I do have an agent. They get me into sort of more high profile jobs. You have uh, you have managers and agents who uh, send your picture and your resume out and pitch you for different different auditions and uh, I think the, the agent is sort of like your go-to like they get the breakdowns which are sort of um, the cast directors put this thing on the breakdowns and it's it's just a, like a like a paragraph about what the project is and then it lists all the different characters that they're trying to cast and so your agent will look at that and go well this kind of uh, uh, best friend, sidekick girl, uh, seems like it'd be perfect for Amber, so let's submit her and they send your picture. And uh, then the manager kind of sits on top of them and makes sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. So, and they all, they all collect money. <laughs> yeah. What's one of your favorite moments that you've had as an actor? The most exciting thing is when you surprise yourself in the moment. 
you know, when things happen that you didn't expect. Right. And because it's like real life happening, and that's sort of what you strive for. And you hope that the other actors are willing to do that with you, and that they don't just have their sort of set thing that they're going to come back with no matter what you do. You want, you want to feel like what the other actors are doing changes you, and what you do changes them, and a, something unexpected gets created within the context of the story. And what's, uh, what's, one, of the, what's one of your favorite moments as an actor? Um, I think when I was in England, um, I got cast playing uh, the lead in a stage production of Rumblefish, which was written uh, as a novel originally by S.E. Hinton. She wrote The Outsiders and they made films of both these things. So we did the world stage premiere, it was a big tour in the UK, and I got cast as uh, Matt Dillon's character, Rusty James. Wow. And that was... Uh, a thrilling, memorable experience. It was like my first paying acting job. So what's a good educational background for an actor or an actress? Well, I my thing is, you know, I think it's great, like, the more experience you have performing, the better. But I don't, you know, and I don't think training is a bad thing, but I think a lot of people get trained with very bad habits because every teacher has their own way of doing things. And so if you're in, like, a very sort of um, closed environment, where everyone's learning from the same teachers, it, it's sort of, you know, you need to learn from as many sources as you can. So I would say getting out in the world and experiencing things, learning from other actors whose work you admire, um, you know, being at, just being, getting on stage, being in plays, and then just, I think the most important thing is be a real person. Like, you have to do things, have experiences to draw upon. Uh, what's a good educational background? Uh, you guys have uh, any particular path that you took? I recommend going to an acting school of any kind. Just finding a teacher and working with them. I did elementary school and junior high school, and I didn't go to high school because I was working in television in Florida. So then I didn't get a college education either. But you did graduate from high school because you worked with tutors. Mm -hmm. I did that. So your high school was, you were on set yep. while you were in high school? Mm -hmm. Working at Universal Studios in Florida where there would be a little trailer and you'd be in school in your trailer and then that universal tour would go by and go, this is where the kids from Nickelodeon go to school. <laughs> Stick your head out of the window and wave. And they drive away. But it was a weird fishbowl scenario. But I found I learned more working with a tutor one-on-one -on -one than I did in the classroom scenario anyway. Um, well, you never really stop educating yourself as an actress. Um, I think it, to become a master of your craft takes a lifetime of work. Um, I'm fortunate enough to be working um, on this production with people that have been in the business their whole lives and absolute masters of their trade. I think that to be a really good filmmaker, whether you're an actress, director, DP, whatever, you should get as much experience as you can on set. Um, you know, and, and, and really get some knowledge as, as to every aspect of what goes into the, the process. Um, I oppose to doing the route of going to a conservatory where you get everything under one roof, uh, voice, dance, you know, acting, speech, movement. I accumulated all those skills by doing different classes over the years um, with different teachers that are specialists in that field. So I, oh, cool. you know, sort of did my own mishmash of uh, of educational to uh, obtain all those skills, and I'm, it's ongoing. I think I think um, going to uh, to college and getting a, a theater degree is also a good a good way to go, and maybe making that your minor and having a major in something else so that you have something else to fall back on is always a good thing. I feel like if you if you want to be an actor, you should be as educated in the art of acting as possible. I agree. There are a lot of big life decisions that you, you know, have to take into account that you don't have job security, that you don't know what your life will be like next month or the month after in terms of, you know, family, kids. I mean, it's a big decision. It, it's, it's very unstable and um, you really never know what's going to happen. So you both uh, definitely have... Uh, enriched your lives by doing more than just acting, right? Adam does a lot of music. Amber, you write books as well, right? You're a published author, and uh, and you both have this movie together now too, right? So you you do more than just one particular thing. Is is it really just uh, I don't know accessing the arts, living in the arts, living in a artistic community? 
Yeah, well, it's two things, I think. One is finance. <laughs> there's not always auditions, there's not always acting jobs around, so you do as much as you can to make money. And the other is anything you do that it, you do with spirit in an artistic way will inform you as an actor. You have to have a life with which to draw from. You can't just sit around waiting for the phone to ring. So, Laura, uh, any, any last bit of advice for an aspiring actress? I think the most important thing is you just really have to love it. You have to love doing it. And what advice do you have for a young budding actress? Really to listen to your heart, whether you're an actor or anything. A plumber, an electrician, a producer, a director, an artist of any kind. You know, just to really listen to your heart and follow your dreams and don't let anybody tell you otherwise because you only live once and uh, you might as well make the most of it because if you do what you love then you'll never work a day in your life and that is the truth. To, to know what uh, being an actress is, is you're part of the arts and um, you should fill your life with art. So, Adam, you were saying uh, advice. The advice. When I went to my first audition, I was like 11 years old, and it was for a commercial of some kind. And I remember sitting in the waiting room next to an older actor, and I said to him, how do I know I want to be an actor? And he said, don't be an actor. <laughs> I got real kind of hurt and offended because I'd assumed this was what I wanted to do. And I was like, what do you mean don't be an actor? He's like, don't do it. Quit give up, go home, go do something else. You should. I know you should. You should do it right now. And I was like, how do you know that about me? And he said, I don't know that about you, but if there's anything I can say that will convince you not to, then you shouldn't do it because it's really, really hard and you're taking up space for people that know they want to do it and that yeah. would give up anything and sleep on any floor to have it. Yeah. So don't be an actor. So that's the advice I always give. I say, don't be an actor. Because if some <laughs> guy sitting on a porch in Los Angeles can say something that would make you not want to do it, Probably not for you.